everyone, we are so excited to be back at Crossway Kids Online today. And we are extra excited today because today is Big Step Camping Style. We have our hiking gear, our water bottles and our backpacks all ready to go. I love Big Step so much because we get to talk about Jesus, how much he loves us and how we can be his friend forever. And because today is such a special day, we don't want you to be watching this by yourself, but as a family. So go and get them now. Now that you're all together, let's worship our God. We can always sing to our God because he is always up to something good in our lives, even when we don't realize it. So let's stand and sing. good is it that we get to worship together as a family and we get to have fun together too let's play a game called never would I ever camping style coming up on your screen are a whole heap of crazy things that could happen when you're camping if it's something that you would do give yourself a point then at the end add up all your points and see who do the craziest things oh Ella I think we're gonna learn a lot about each other in this game so let's start playing
You know, I don't know if I would have done half of those things. They all seemed pretty scary. Oh, so true. Sleeping outside without a tent would take a lot of courage, especially if the weather was bad. You know, one time I went camping with my family and we were staying outside and the massive storm came over. We were in a tent, but it was terrifying. You know, you're not the first people to be intimidated by a storm. Yeah, like um, Russell and Carl from Up? No, not quite. Anna and Elsa's parents from Frozen. Wow. Um, I was actually talking about Peter, one of Jesus' disciples. Oh, well, I was talking about Disney+. Plus. Okay, well, let's change that. Peter was one of Jesus' closest disciples, and once, in the middle of a storm, he let fear get the best of him. Let's check out his story. Hey, Kellen, you got something for us? I sure do. You've heard the story of when Jesus fed the 5,000 people with just a few loaves of bread and fish? Oh, I love that story! Yes! <laughs> this isn't that story. Oh, way to get our hopes up. This story takes place just after the feeding of the 5,000. And here to help me tell it are the so-and-so show players. Oh, how exciting. Okay, so after Jesus helped feed the 5,000 people, he told his disciples to get in a boat and wait for him on the other side of the Sea of Galilee while Jesus stayed back alone and prayed. After the boat was already a long way from land, uh, we still need to be able to see them. Thank you. It was being pounded by the waves because the wind was blowing so hard. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to the disciples. He walked on the lake. The disciples saw Jesus walking on the lake and were terrified. It's a bird! It's a plane! It's a ghost! Ah! Be brave, it is I. Do not be afraid. Lord? Is it really you? If it's you, tell me to come out on the water. Come. So, Peter got out of the boat and he walked on the water toward Jesus. But when Peter felt the wind, he became afraid and began to sink. Help me! Ah, Lord, save me! I'm drowning! Your faith is so small. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed onto the boat, the wind suddenly died down. You really are the Son of God! The end. Wow, how courageous was Peter to take such a big step off the boat into the water? He must have really trusted Jesus. And by doing this, he shows that he has a close and personal relationship with God, and he'd be willing to do anything to follow Jesus. There's actually nothing that God wants more than to have a close and personal relationship with us too. Everything he does is aimed at us being closer and closer to him. And we see this all the way through the entire Bible. Everything points to a relationship with him. So this one story of Peter is actually just one part of a much bigger story that applies to you and me today. At the beginning of our story, God created the world. Most importantly, he created people like you and me. God wanted to have a great, friendship with us, a close and amazing relationship. But people decided that they didn't want to listen to God or that they wanted to do what he said. And they chose to do their own things. And this shattered that friendship. In the Bible, this is called sin. It's all the wrong things we do, like when we lie, when we cheat, when we don't listen to our mum or dad. Sin has a consequence and someone had to pay. But God didn't want the story to end this way. So he came up with a plan. And that plan was Jesus. You see, the only way to fix the brokenness in the world was to send Jesus to earth so he could die for our sins on the cross. 
just because we did wrong things, we were the ones that should have been punished, but Jesus took our punishment instead. That doesn't seem fair, but Jesus loves us so much that he said, I want to do this for you. So he gave his life on the cross for you and me. But the story still doesn't finish there because three days later, he rose from the dead and the disciples were so amazed that they spent their entire lives telling Jesus' story. Fear looks different for everyone and it can weigh us down. Maybe you're afraid of what your friends might think of you or that they may not be your friends anymore. Maybe you're scared of the future. What if you have no friends in high school? What if you're not good enough? What if someone you love gets sick? Fear can stop us from doing the right thing. Sometimes we feel like a failure and like we're not good enough to be Jesus's friend. We can tell ourselves some pretty awful things like we're such losers or that we're not good enough at things. We can even compare ourselves to others and think, am I even good enough for God to love me? We can feel like a failure. Maybe you can't be courageous because you feel hurt. We can be hurt by people's actions or their words. Maybe someone's teased you or called you a name. Sometimes we can be hurt because people have broken a promise or a special event or holiday has been canceled. These things can cause a lot of hurt. When we feel fear, hurt or failure, we can think some pretty negative things about ourselves. Like, no one loves me, I'm no good, or how can I be so stupid? Around your house, find an empty backpack, just like ours. On pieces of paper, write down some negative thoughts you've had about yourself. Scrunch them up and put them in your backpack. How did you go? Did you fill your backpack with negative thoughts? When we take the courageous big step to follow Jesus, he takes all of our fear, failure and hurt and throws it away. And he replaces it with the essentials we need to survive the storm. God says, I forgive you. We still make mistakes sometimes, but we can say sorry to God and he'll forgive us every time. Although we don't measure up and we sometimes feel like a failure, God says, I love you. You know, there's nothing you can do to stop God from loving you. He doesn't want you to be like everyone else. God made you just the way you are and he loves you just the way you are. God gives us hope. We don't always know what's going to happen in the future, but God promises that he's going to be with us the whole time. The best part of that is that we also get hope for our future in heaven because God promises that we get to spend eternity with him. Now it's your turn. Because of God's love, we can replace those negative thoughts with some positive thoughts. So why don't you take some pieces of paper and write down some positive reminders for yourself for when you're in the middle of a life storm. Taking that courageous step and asking Jesus to be your forever friend is as simple as A, B, C. We admit that we've done wrong things in the past. We believe that Jesus died for us and we choose to follow Jesus and take the big step. Do you want to ask Jesus to be your forever friend today? This is a decision that no one can make except for you. There are generally three ways that people choose to answer this question. There are no right or wrong answers, just different ones. Some of you may say, I'm not ready to do that yet. I still have some questions I'd like to ask. That's okay. And you can talk to someone you trust, like your mum or dad or your small group leader. Some of you may have already taken the big step and that's awesome. You know that Jesus is your friend forever. It's not always the easiest, but you can always give it your best go. But today, for the very first time, some of you may say, I want to ask Jesus to be my forever friend. I will admit that I've done some wrong things, but I'm ready to ask Jesus to forgive me. I'm ready to choose to follow him. It's super important that we all make this decision for ourselves. 
But at Crossbow Kids, we also think it's important that we talk to our families about this. So why don't you take a moment now to talk about the decision you want to make. We want to celebrate with you today whichever decision you've made. If you've decided that today isn't the day to take the big step, that's okay, keep asking questions. If you've already taken the big step, that's amazing. Keep following Jesus and doing what he says. But today, if you have decided that you want Jesus to be your forever friend for the first time, we want to send you a big step party pack with a wristband, a booklet that will help you follow Jesus and some other things to help you celebrate. So head over to our Crossway Kids Big Step website and tell us that you've taken the big step today. Then we can get in touch with you and send you the Big Step Party Pack. But before we finish, I think we should pray as a family, thanking God for who he is and that he sent Jesus so that he can be our friend. Well, thanks for joining us for our big step today. We hope you guys have a great week. See you next time.